Hey, what's up? David with Brazos Valley Barbell. So today I'm going to be remaking the anchoring your hips for deadlifts video. I, I, I think this was one of the best videos that I did and I know a lot of the viewers on the channel really liked when I did more of the analysis of different lifts and I'm going to go back to doing a lot more of that. I, I like what the channel is doing overall as far as a little bit of the mental aspect, my thought process on programming and um, the, the combination of the technical stuff and there's just my own personal training. But I think the thing that I do best is the technical analysis of lifting. And I think that's something that I can do well as far as getting my points across. So since I made the original video and now I've, I've changed the cueing just a little bit and I think maybe I'll be able to explain some of it uh, better and a little bit more concisely. So uh, we're gonna be redoing that one. I don't plan on redoing all the videos I made. Obviously the, the videos are on the channel. But if you have uh, any ideas or any, anything that you're struggling with and you think they would make for a good video, then let me know. I'm, I'm happy to, to get ideas from people. Sometimes I don't always know the things that people are struggling with. So if, if there is something that, that's a, a common thread between people, I'd be more than happy to, to film a video and draw all the lines and do all that again. So we're gonna go back into the, the anchoring video. We're gonna talk about uh, the bracing and legs and the, the rounding in the upper back, potentially a lot of the things I've made other videos about, but I want to bring them all together and make something that's pretty cohesive. So uh, hopefully you enjoy the video. And like I said, I'm gonna be coming out with a whole lot more of these coming pretty soon. So subscribe to the channel if you're into that kind of thing and anchoring. Okay, so we're gonna run through this setup here. And the first thing that we wanna do is divide things into three different segments. So we're gonna start off with the, the trunk and the brace. So in this case, what we're going to be talking about mostly is going to be the legs and the shoulders. So just kind of as a, as a precursor to this, nothing that we're, that we're doing should affect this segment and, and the neutral back that I'm creating. So with that in mind, all of the other cues are essentially going to be about the, the upper back and creating space here, and then the legs and creating tension down there. So we'll, we'll go through the setup and talk about how all that's happening. So in the beginning, what, we're, what, I'm, what I'm going through here is I'm really trying to find a good combination of a good trunk angle and also good pressure from my legs. So with that setup, there's gonna be a lot of force that's happening from here, uh, really pushing out um, from the, not necessarily from the sides of my feet, but spreading the floor. So that's all in an effort to just try to create tension in my quads. I'm really not, I'm really not big on feeling my feet necessarily uh, through the entire deadlift, but I am trying to feel the, the effort coming from my quads. So during this whole setup, it's all about that pressure in my quads. Now, I create this space through my upper back and getting a little rounded through here. We're gonna, we're gonna see that uh, play out through the warmups, but the main thing that we're going to be looking at is fighting for extension once I actually am ready to pull. So the biggest cue that I'm gonna be using today in the, in the second anchoring video is that I want to emphasize pulling my shoulders on top of my legs. So my legs are the foundation and my shoulders pulling on top of them is going to, to create the most force. So as we're going through these warmups, the main thing that I wanna be looking at is the relationship between the, the tension of my legs and the, the softness potentially in my upper back. So let me see if I can roll that back just a little bit. So here's a good example of it. Uh, with my head down at the floor, that really helps me emphasize the, the protraction of my shoulders to get that long arms. It also makes it to where I can get a nice upright angle. And it'll be interesting here in a little bit when we play with the different, the different views, how I'm maybe not as upright as it seems from the side angle or from the, from the uh, front angle when we get to that one later. So the, the biggest thing that I'm trying to accomplish here is the perception of tightness in my legs and then trying to mimic that position or the, the, the upright position when I'm ready to pull. So through my setup, that's, that's basically the entire thought process. So loose arms, tension in the legs, and then I create space with my upper back. Now, when I'm ready to pull, that's where I'm, I'm going from the rounded position to where I'm pulling my shoulders back on top of my legs, and that creates extension in my upper back. Everything else remains static. If we, if we play it back just a little bit here, we'll see that my hip angle really doesn't change or my hip height 
really doesn't change much as I'm uh, from the setup to when I'm pulling my shoulders back on top of my hips. So that's because I'm having constant pressure and a lot of pressure from my legs trying to extend and then I'm creating the space with my, with my upper back. So a big portion of this is, is going to be being able to differentiate between total looseness in the upper body and actually creating more tightness by having the, the long upper back or the long arms creating the, the slightly protracted shoulders on the upper back. So that'll be a little bit more visible when we get around to the front angle. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna labor that point too much from here, but what we're really looking at is just the effort from shoulders in front of the bar during my setup to shoulders on top of my legs. So that's the main idea. The main concept is finding ways to get your shoulders in a position to where your legs can exert force down into the floor. And we have that nice vertical bar path through the whole thing. So this is my, my first set of the day. I did some pretty easy reps here. Um, and we'll, we'll start playing around with the different uh, angles after this so we can get a good look at everything. But nothing is changing, and especially here, that that neutral back that I had is now that I have the belt on and everything and now that I'm ready for my working weight, nothing has changed. So that area, no matter what I'm doing, no matter how rounded or extended I get in my upper back, none of that is ever going to be affected. The, the brace is always the same. So whenever I'm cueing lifters, if I say that I want, um, you know, your upper back a little bit more extended or a little bit more rounded or hips high, you know, what, whatever I'm saying, this component always needs to be the same. So the ridge the rib cage always needs to maintain association with the pelvis. So if we don't have that in place, that's where you need to start. None of these other cues will work well if we're not making that static. So we'll move on and assume that that's good. So same thing, nice loose-ish upper back and then I pull my shoulders on top of my legs and these should look pretty consistent where I'm getting on top of my legs and really exerting force down at the floor. So. I mentioned earlier the 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 cue with the with the feet as far as spreading the floor, but really that's an effort in just getting tension into your quads. Once I'm on top of my legs, the effort should be up. So this is kind of a mistake, and actually some of my my lockout problems were probably a little bit of me trying to get back too early. One of the biggest cues for me as far as or past when I'm on top of my legs, I want to finish the pull up before I go back. Um, it's, a, it's a good cue for maintaining tension in the upper back and it's a great cue for maintaining effort through the legs. So we can finish how I get all the way up before I go back. And then the common cue there is knees before hips. So that's where it kind of, kind of makes sense. So from this back angle, this was actually an interesting one and one that I really don't like watching for myself because I feel a whole lot more upright than I look in this angle. So I've, I've actually filmed from this angle um, a, a lot before and I, I, I didn't like what it was doing my deadlift. I started changing things, I started sitting down too low. So we'll see here that when, I, when I'm ready to pull right here, that there's, there's a pretty good angle from my, from my trunk down my legs. And, and to me, I feel a whole lot more upright. And I'm, I, can, I can guarantee that the last video and the videos we'll see after this, that I'm in the exact same position. So it's just kind of interesting to, to look at these things. And I think what I do well is when we come around to the front, we'll see how much space I'm giving across my upper back to get my, my upper body into a good position. Now, one of the things that I like from here when we come around, it'll look like my shoulders are a lot more relaxed than in this angle. It actually looks like my upper back is really, really rock solid and that I'm not giving a whole lot of my shoulders. So it's just interesting when we're playing with angles. I've talked about um, uh, in another video that we wanna play or we wanna film from videos or film from angles and get our videos from angles that give us good feedback for what we're looking for. This angle kind of tricks me. This angle makes it look like I'm doing things that I don't like when I actually am doing things pretty well. So um, it, it's just an interesting uh, it kind of wrinkle on the, the, the video and the things that we're seeing is that I, I can go to a different angle and some of the cues that I'm using actually don't show up as well when it, it's actually looking exactly the same. Now, one of the, the things that we can think about from here is that the goal isn't always to get as upright as possible. So with this, this angle, 
I'm probably more upright than a, than a lot of people are able to get, but we can think of this as a uh, almost like a squat. So when I'm squatting, the goal is not to be as upright as possible. It, we should be trying to maintain some level of, of uh, you know, trunk angle. We're not trying to get into a good morning position. But the main goal with our trunk angle is so that we can stay in a good position to utilize our legs effectively. It's going to be the same thing here. If my hips were higher than what they were, then I would have to use a whole lot more back. Now, if they're lower, if my, if my trunk was more vertical, then my knees would have to jut out in front of the bar and I wouldn't be able to use really any back and it would be a whole lot less efficient. So this is a, a good blend, this is a good position where I get a good balance between my legs and my back and a shorter range of motion overall. So from the front, we can see that the, the main emphasis is going to be on the, on the long arms. So compared to the last video, this looks a whole lot different. So as I'm pulling my shoulders on top of my legs, we can see how long and how how rounded my upper back is. So, the main idea, or the if we're if we're talking about pulling slack, I think a lot of times people think about pulling the bar to them, right? If they're trying to pull slack, and I think that's the exact wrong way to think about it. When we when you see me grip the bar, you'll see that the main thing is that my shoulders are going up, and after this next rep, we can see that my shoulders will go up and then I pull. So that idea is that my arms are long and relaxed and I'm using my legs to push down into the floor and pull my shoulders up as much as I can. So my arms really are not involved a whole lot here. So all of the effort is gonna be the, the legs pushing down into the floor and then once I have that perception or that, that feeling in my upper back, that's when I'm able to pull back on top of my legs and just have the vertical force down, well, it's the, from my legs down to the floor, but mostly I'm thinking shoulders to the ceiling. So the, the, the main component is going to be that the legs are, are probably the most critical aspect, but they, they shouldn't be very dynamic. Most of the effort from, from what is happening with the legs should be pretty static. And I kind of like this angle here. We can, we can see that the angle from my, at my knee should be staying the same through all of these reps. So, uh, if you're if you're having trouble using your legs, one of the one of the ways to say it would just be patience with your knees. So, if we can say, "I want you to keep your knees bent a little bit longer," then that really what that cue is is that I shouldn't be trying to extend my legs too fast. If I extend my legs too fast, then my hips rise and my shoulders fall over. So, keeping my knees bent slightly longer while trying to go straight up to the ceiling that usually finds a, a good combination of both of those things. So um, this is a different day, um, and I, I actually, uh, I'm using straps on this day, and one of the things I like with straps is that I can remove my grip from the process. Um, I, I know that my grip is going to be strong, so in this video, we'll see that I'm really able to get my shoulders on top of my legs. So I, I don't like thinking necessarily about um, the, the barbell on its own, but I, I have a good feeling of where the pressure is going to be from my legs. And I'm trying to get my shoulders on top of that position, just like what I would be doing in a squat. You know, if the bar, if the bar moves midfoot or if it moves further behind you, then we have a lot of issues and your legs aren't able to, to work effectively. So if I'm able to keep my, my balance on top of my legs, then all of the effort is towards the ceiling. So the, the, the critical pieces here are going to be constant pressure with the legs and then relaxed arms, and then all of the effort is coming from the arms, pulling back, or the shoulders, pulling back on top of your legs so that we can get all of this, all of the force to go vertically as high as we can into the ceiling. So um, that, that was a, a big revelation for me as far as fixing my lockouts when I was actually able to come back to, to basically these concepts, and it made me a whole lot stronger, and now my deadlift is clicking maybe like it never ever has before.